Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to another installment of Student Dave. Oh, my pen's dying, whatever. Okay, um, I've been um, messing around with uh, looking at some information on base there. I mean, you know, kind of fun looking at it, but there's a lot of stuff that I think is just kind of confusing or part of the lecture, and so, you know, I'm going to try to go over it here. It's kind of sunny today, or I'm moving in every direction simultaneously. Anyways, okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, base theorem. Duh. Um, it's a very general, useful um, uh, statistical um, tool, and we'll go over a very basic example of inference, and then uh, later on we'll go to the things like common filters and rec recursive bays and things like that. But anyways, to start off with, I think it's good to kind of show uh, the equation, what it means kind of generally, and then we'll do an example, okay? So uh, the whole point of Bayes is to basically have some data and then make some claim about the probability of some hypothesis. That is, you have some probability and you want to know what is the probability of a particular hypothesis given your data. Sorry, pen's kind of dying, whatever. Okay, and so this is what you're after. This is like your little like gold standard here. This is what you're, you're going for. And um, this is basically what's called the posterior, the posterior probability. And um, Bay, um, he was the per supposedly an amateur mathematician. Um, I don't know about amateur, I mean, maybe by definition of like it wasn't his job, but regardless, a very um, amazing discovery just from the basic principles of uh, probability, which you can look up that kind of stuff. But basically, the idea is that you take the probability of a hypothesis. This is like your knowledge. We'll talk about that in a minute. And this is your, what's called your prior. And you simply multiply it by the likelihood of the data. That is, the probability of the data given the, given a particular hypo, uh, probability of a particular data given the hypothesis. And then you normalize it by the probability of the data itself, and you end up with this. And so this is what's called your likelihood. You spelled it, whatever. And you're going to multiply the likelihood of the data given the hypothesis times the probability of the hypothesis divided by the probability of the data will give you your posterior. This is Bayes' theorem. This is what everyone's talking about, and it's used in a lot of different domains. And we'll give an example here. Okay, so uh, now we're going to do an example of uh, Bayesian inference, a very simple example, just to really uh, explain the general principle of what each variable means and what the whole idea behind Bayes is. And then uh, later on, we'll talk about distributions in the next video. Okay, so like we said before, um, we have our equation. We have our Bayesian theorem which is the probability of a hypothesis given the data equals the probability of the hypothesis, the prior times the likelihood of the data, the probability of the data given the hypothesis, divided by <coughs> the probability of the data. Right, so that's our base theorem. So let's look at an example. Um, let's say you live in New York, New York City. Uh, you live in like Williams, Williamsburg, okay? And you're hanging out there and you got a bunch of buddies and he's like your buddy and you got like kind of crazy hair because your buddy is a hipster um, let's draw them. Uh, you, you hipsters, they have bodies, just like everyone else. There's a little smoke, cigarette, uh, cigarette smoke, and uh, he's wearing like probably skinny jeans or something. And he's holding your classic PBR. That's past blue ribbon. And let's say he's wearing a t-shirt, you know, and it's full of like irony. Anyways, okay, so there's our dude, our hipster dude. And you live in New York City. And we want to say, okay, so you're super drunk in New York and you're strolling along and you can't really see people's faces or anything like that or what they're clothing. But for some reason, you have state-dependent memory and you can notice that they're carrying a PBR or not. And you know a lot of statistics about the area because you're weird like that. And so you want to be able to say, from the data I know, um, what is the probability that the person in front of me is a hipster given that they're carrying a Paps Blue Ribbon? And so we're going to do that as an example right now. And so we need some data in order to do this, all right? So we say, what is the prob? So the first thing we need is the probability that someone is a hipster. Okay, the probability that someone's a hipster. We're in Williamsburg, right? So there's a lot of hipsters or whatever in New York. So say, the probability is like say 0 0.6. There's a there's a lot of people that are hipsters there. Okay. Then we say, well, what is the probability that you're drinking PBR given that you're a hipster? And let's say it's like uh, I don't know, it's like 90 90 percent because like you know, like, there might be 10% of hipsters that are super, uh, like, progressive, and it's, like, ironic now that they don't drink PBR. In fact, they, they drink Zima. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but those two statistics we need. But we also need to look at the probability of the data, and so we'll need some more statistics here. One thing we're going to need to know is what is the probability of not being a hipster? And because probability is sum to 1, 
that probability will be 40%. Then we need uh, one more statistic, and that is what is the probability of drinking PBR if you're not a hipster? Okay, and so, well, I mean, you know, hipsters, uh, they may have cornered the market, but they don't own the market on PBR. There are many people that enjoy its uh, lack of tastiness, I mean, its excellence. Okay, so these, these are the data we need to know in order to do uh, our calculation. And so what we're trying to figure out again is what is the probability of being a hipster given uh, that someone is drinking a PBR right now. So you walk up to them, you're wasted, and you can see all you, all you can see is that, that red, white, and blue, and you go, oh, that person is a hipster by this probability. Okay? Um, and so here's how we're going to do it. So we, first we have the probability of the hipster. This is our prior. This is our knowledge. So we got 0.6, our prior, right, times our likelihood, which is uh, the 90%. The likelihood that someone is a hipster, um, someone is drinking PBR given that they're a hipster. Okay? But then we need our probability of the data. Now we're basically asking, what is the probability that anyone in, William, in Williamsburg is drinking PBR? Well, to get that, we want to see, well, what is the frequency of that kind of person, that, that is, whether they're a hipster or not, and then figure out how many of those people drink PBR, and multiply those values, and add them together for both non-hipsters and hipsters. So, if we look at this, we want to say, well, there's 60% of the people are hipsters, and of those 60%, 90% of them drink PBR. So the way you calculate that is going to be 60 times 90. But then we need to add in the people that aren't hipsters that are also drinking PBR. And we say, well, what is the probability that someone's not a hipster? That's 40%. And of that 40%, how many of them are drinking PBR? 30%. So we take the 40% and multiply it by the 30%. And this whole grant gives us a grand total of 0.81. So that basically tells us that the if you see someone drinking a PBR, what is the probability that they're a hipster? Okay? And that, that's really the basic idea of this. That is, you, you're incorporating your knowledge, which would be the probability that someone's a hipster. That is, you know where you're at. You live in a town with a lot of hipsters. And you know how often hipsters drink and how often non-hipsters drink PBR. And from that, using Bayes' theorem, you can calculate what is the probability that someone is a hipster given they're drinking PBR. But there's some nuances to this that we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so we just talked about uh, how to calculate uh, the probability that someone, if they're drinking PBR, that they're a hipster in a town like Williamsburg, right? And so I really want to kind of show you some of the power or what, what uh, Bayes is really doing. And let's just say now you're not in Williamsburg. Let's say you're, I don't know, in Brooklyn or, or I don't know, maybe you're in New Jersey and you're hanging out like Jersey Shore kind of area. Anyways, so we're going to say that the probability of being a hipster in this area is a lot lower. And we'll see that if we just change this value, that is this knowledge value, we can do the results will change pretty significantly. Um, in actuality, that if you change this number to say, let's say you're in uh, Jersey, you know, New Jersey, you're hanging out in uh, Atlantic City or something like that, and you say that the probability of a hipster, oops, hipster, is in fact 10%. Let's say it's much less, right? Okay? If we keep this, these, all these other values constant, of course this will be 90% now, but if we keep all other values constant, it turns out that the probability of being a hipster, given that you're drinking PBR, is in fact now about 25%. And so it's, it's drastically reduced by your knowledge, what you know about the town. And, and this might feel slightly counterintuitive because we just said, well, wait a minute, the pro you know, if you're a hipster, there's like a, almost a 100% chance that you're drinking PBR. That's kind of counterintuitive. And it's all about that prior knowledge, and that's the power base. So let's, so let's look at an example that I think shows how intuitive this is. Um, let's say, like, you have a really trustworthy friend, really, really trustworthy. Like, he's only lied to you, like, once in his life, and it was, like, uh, about having an extra stick of gum, okay? So it's like Mr. Mr. Noble, super honest. And then one day, uh, so you've known him for years, like, you know, your whole life, and he never lied. And then he goes, hey, man, I won the lottery. Yeah, I just won $100 million. Are you going to believe him? Uh, probably not. And why is that? Well, he's super trustworthy. That is, you know, the probability that he's lying to you is incredibly low, given it's this friend. What is the likelihood of him lying is very low. But also you know that prior, the probability of someone winning the lottery is so low, so astronomically low, that you don't believe them. And that's the whole idea, is that you're combining prior knowledge with current data. 
to make a new estimate about the way the world is or the way uh, a certain reality is. And so this here you conclude that your friend is likely lying. Despite his uh, trustworthiness, your prior knowledge tells you that it's not. And so you're combining information, and that's all power based. Um, soon we'll talk about the uh, Bayesian, recursive Bayesian estimation of distributions, and then we'll move on to a special case of Kalman filters. Okay.